A system diagram is effectively just a model. It's a simplified version of reality, a way to uh, take a system that's probably quite complicated because most real systems are and simplify it and present it in a way that's easy to understand. So I'm going to give an example of a system diagram for a farming system to show you how we can do one. Now a good system diagram starts with a boundary. This is just a box that goes all the way around the system and allows us to see what is inside and outside of our system. In this farming system, let's say we've got crops and we've got livestock as well. Now these things are examples of storages. A storage is just any stock of energy or matter within the system. And it's always represented with the word to say what that storage is and a box around it. Now we'll also show that we've got inorganic fertilizer. In our system, that is a storage that exists within our farming system as well. And that storage, that inorganic fertilizer, came from the outside. It had to be purchased. So from the outside, I've got that arrow going in, and that shows that that is an input to the system. And a flow within the system is from fertilizers to the crops. We put the fertilizer on the crops. So the arrow that's going between storages, we would call that a flow. We've also got water entering, which lands on the crops. And of course, water comes from the outside. And this would be rainfall or precipitation would be fine. Any vocabulary like that. And we've also got a river nearby. And this farming system relies in part from rainfall, but also in part from water from the river. So we would call that irrigation. And presumably there is a pump in that river with a, with a pipe that's sending that water up to the crops. Now we've also got livestock here. And in this particular farming system, while we've got some inorganic fertilizer, some of the manure from the livestock is also provided. And what we'll do here is label that flow. That is fertilization. So it's clear what's happening there. It's the, the manure being provided to help fertilize the crops. Now, in this particular farming system, they are selling, let's say, milk. So here we've got milk sold. They also sell meat. Meat sold. So these are things that are being shown to exit the system. So those are outputs of our system. Now, we've also got to provide some feed for the cattle. And by the way, feed, the word feed is a noun in this context. We do use the word feed as a noun when referring to providing food for, for livestock. Uh, what else have we got? Now, we haven't actually shown the crops being output from the system. This is an output. Um, and let's say, for example, this farming system is producing beans, that the crop is producing beans. So then we could call that beans sold. Now what's more in this farming system, we've also got the household. So this will be the, the farming family. And a certain small portion of the crops that are produced might also be provided to the household. So they're relying on this food as um, part of their own food source. So it seems to me that based on this information, this is certainly quite a, um, a small farming system. This is, a, this is definitely not a large commercial system that we've got here. So you can appreciate by looking at this, the advantages of, of presenting things in a system diagram. This is a, a farming system, which is in reality probably very complicated, but by presenting it in this, this model, this simplified form of reality, this diagram, it's a lot easier for us to understand the processes and gain an understanding of the key ideas that are going on within this system. So remember, a good system diagram has 
a boundary around the outside, and that allows us to see what is going on inside and outside of the system. We've got storages of energy or matter, and those are represented with a word that tells us what that storage is and a box around it. We've got inputs and outputs shown with arrows going in or out of the system. And we've got flows, which are transfers or transformations of energy or matter between the storages represented with arrows.